Hello and welcome to a review of The Door Through Space by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Bradley's first full-length novel and my first novel from her. And the best way for me to describe this book is a space western, which I was not expecting when <laughs> I started reading it. I was intrigued because I did find a brand new book by this and it was a 2007 reprint. I thought maybe it was a more modern book but it is her first novel and it was originally published in 1961. I will state that the main protagonist name Race Cargill is probably the most 1960s protagonist name I could possibly think of. You're introduced to Race at the very beginning of the book as a, a temporarily suspended spy. He used to be a spy uh, on Wolf, which is the planet that the book takes place on. Wolf is a planet with the red sun. It is an outpost of Terra or outpost of Earth. And the way that things have been set up on this world and the way that Earth has conquered space is by when they go to these planets, they set up these little like cities and trading hubs and they're like, as long as you give us this little bit of land and let us have these little outposts and, you know, let us have our sovereignty in these small spaces. You know, we'll leave you alone. You do your religion, you do your trading, you do your whatever. We won't interfere with that. You have your own thing, but we will trade with you and have these little outposts. And as you get more into the story, this does feel, and how Earth has conquered these planets, it does feel very much like anti-colonial sentiment and given where the British Empire was at this time, or I should say was not, because it was slowly starting to fall apart and dissipate at this time, or the the rains were coming undone at that time. It, it can be viewed as anti-colonial sentiment in this book. You're introduced to this character, Reese Cargill. He's a former spy for Terra on this planet Wolf, which is kind of like a desert planet. Again, feels very much like the Wild West. It feels very much like a space western. Uh, it kept thinking as I was reading more and more through this book, it was giving me Firefly vibes, which if you are a fan of the show, you probably will very much enjoy this book. I actually very much did enjoy this book. Follow this character after he, he's been retire, retired, uh, forced retirement for the last six years behind a desk and he ha is about ready to leave Wolf to go find life somewhere else on another planet. He's, he's abandoning his life on Wolf. When he is stopped from a plea from help from his sister, his mortal enemy, his blood feud, his sworn blood feud, a former spy friend uh, has kidnapped his sister's daughter, who they're married. <laughs> His ex-best friend, who is they have a mortal blood feud with, is married to his sister. And he has uh, escaped with their daughter, and she's beside herself, and she needs his help to find her. And so before he can leave off onto his retirement on Planet Unknown, he is going to settle this blood feud with his brother-in-law once and for all and find his niece. And I, I'm laughing because when I say it out loud, it sounds very silly, but it's not. It, 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 sounds, it sounds like a very silly premise of the book. And I don't feel like I'm giving Bradley enough credit because I did get swept up in the story. She did do a very good job about building this world. This world is inhabited by not only supplanted earth people, but also humans that have over time mingled with the non-human species. And so most of them look human, but there's a subtle undercurrent of like, they're different than us. They think different than us and the us meaning earth people or straight Terrans. Uh, they call the other subset of human-like people dry towners because again it's like a desert planet it's a red sun desert planet and so they have a lot of interesting customs uh, i was as a modern woman i didn't really like the fettering of the females the fettering of women either uh, 
culturally by choice or uh, not by choice. It was very much hearkened to the fact that at this time period in America, you know, women couldn't have a bank account unless a man signed off on it or have a credit card or we could vote, but you know, we couldn't really own property or start a business unless, you know, s some man in the life signed off on it. Women still very much at this time were properties because, you know, they couldn't file for divorce unless there was an extreme need for one, or of course the man could, but enough of that. It, there was, the, the women wore jeweled bracelets, so it was like a, a jeweled fettering of themselves, and they wore these bracelets and had these chains, and that was not a Terran custom, it wasn't an earth custom, it was uh, the dry towner and the, the people of this planet, not just those that are humanoid, but also uh, the Chakha, which is a little furry uh, native species. Um, their women did this as well. It was very much part of wolf culture that women of any worth were fettered in this way and based on the type of handcuffs and jewelry was their station in life, whether they were lower station or higher station of their partner. I got way too uh, sidetracked by that, but it was just, it did help with the world building of making it feel like a completely different time and place, uh, which I will give her credit for that. It just also was of its time and place. And it, it the whole story follows Cargill from going to the main city to find, to going on this caravan to trying to find his blood feud enemy. And as I mentioned, I did actually enjoy the book. The beginning of it was very slow, but I did find myself very quickly getting sucked into it the further along in about, you know, page 100. I was not able to put the book down and finished it very quickly. It only took like two and a half hours for me to complete the book. And I liked it so much that I decided to look up more information about Mary Zimmerman Bradley in order to make this video. And unfortunately, the comparison of this book to Firefly doesn't just stop at it being a space western. Um, you know, as a child of the 90s, I very much loved Firefly and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and other creations by Joss Whedon. And just like Joss Whedon, Marion Zimmer Bradley has um, some essay issues uh, in their past. <laughs> And as such, this will probably be the only book I will read from her. I may, you know, if I come across Mist of Avalon, which is her most well-known work, I may give that a read, but my TBR is so long, I might just choose not to, not to get to it. Sorry for the weird location uh, and sound quality and lighting shift, but I also wanted to mention that when I found out about uh, Bradley's history, uh, I also felt a little bit icky about some of the aspects uh, in the book because one of the antagonists is called the Toy Maker, and it has to do with children and how uh, children sometimes have negative thoughts towards their parents. And then after I learned the information about Bradley, it kind of just totally shifted the entire book a bit. Uh, in a more negative way, which is why it it's sitting at around like three, three and a half stars for me. It's just with that background information, it kind of left a little poor taste in my mouth. Like the book overall is good. And if you just want to enjoy the book, maybe don't read Wikipedia about Bradley. But I just wanted to also mention that a little bit more in depth because I forgot about it um, in the original video. So I'm going to give you back now, but I did want to also mention that. If you do find a copy of The Door Through Space and you are someone who liked Firefly and you are someone who can still enjoy a work of fiction in spite of the author or separate from the author's own problems and faults, I do recommend this book very much. It was very enjoyable. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then.